Welcome to the episode number six. So up till now we have learned what is recursion, what is recursion tree, how does recursion work. In this episode, we will be looking at four steps in which we can solve any recursion problem. Okay, so I have generalized these four steps. Step number one is we have to identify whether a problem is recursive or not. So we already saw two problems. One problem was uh, how to find the n factorial. So let us say we are writing a function. That function is responsible to return us n factorial. We can use the same function to return n minus one factorial as well, right? So that's why the problem of finding n factorial becomes a recursive problem. Similarly, let us consider the finding the summation of n natural numbers. So let us say we are writing a function. That function is responsible to return us the summation of n natural numbers. Now we can use this function to return us the sum of n minus one natural numbers as well. Okay. So the way n factorial depends upon n minus one factorial. Similarly, summation of n natural numbers depend upon summation of n minus one natural numbers. If somebody returns you the summation of n minus one natural numbers, you will be able to calculate sum of n natural numbers by simply adding n to it. If somebody gives you n minus one factorial, you will simply multiply that answer with n and then return it. So this is how we can identify whether a problem is recursive in nature or not. Okay. So if a problem is recursive in nature, we will be able to break down that problem into smaller problem and we will be able to make use of the same function. All right. This is the step number one. So this step will be more clear as we will be solving more and more questions in the future lectures. Now let us talk about the step number two. Step number two is do the small task, do the small work. Okay. Step number three is let recursion do the remaining work. This is the step number three. Step number four is apply a base condition. So why is base condition necessary? Base condition is necessary because we don't want that our recursion goes on forever. That's why. So we will be looking at all these four steps with the help of an example. Now, uh, by the way, step number two and three are interchangeable. Okay. That also we will see in the next lecture. Also from the next lecture, we will be looking at interview problems, the problems which have been asked in interviews and which are frequently asked in interviews. So be ready, focus on this lecture and make sure that you make tiny notes for yourself. All right. So let us start with the problem. The problem is find the reversal of an array. We will be given an array and we have to find the reversal of an array. We will be using these four steps to find the solution to the problem. Okay. So let's say the given array is one, two, three, four, five. These are the elements. Let me index them. One, zero, one, two, three, and four. These are the indices. Now we need to reverse. Uh, after the reversal, the array would look something like this. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. So basically when we reverse an array, what actually happens is uh, the first element and the last element are swapped. Okay. First element goes to the position of last element and the last element goes to the position of first element. Similarly, the second element goes to the position of second last element and uh, second last element goes to the position of second element and so on. So this is what happens actually when we reverse an array. Now how we can look at this problem in a recursive manner. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, whenever we think recursively, we should be lazy. Okay, we should be lazy. First step is we will ask somebody else to give us the answer for a huge chunk of the problem. Okay, I will ask somebody to give me the answer for this part. And what I will do, I will simply reverse the first and the last element. Okay, I will do the tiny part, the small work. The small work is I will just reverse the first element with the last element, the leftmost element with the rightmost element. My task is done. Now I will ask recursion to do the same for the remaining portion. What will be the remaining portion? So let me take two pointers here. One pointer is L, one pointer is R. Uh, yeah, one pointer is L, one pointer is R. So L is initially pointing to this one. R is initially pointing to this five. My task is to basically swap one and five. And I will ask recursion to handle the part from L plus one till r minus one in a similar way, right? Okay. So if somebody gives me the answer, if somebody solves the problem from L plus one to r minus one, this huge chunk, then for me, it becomes very simple. I just have to swap the first element with the last element. Okay. So this problem seems to be very recursive to me. Uh, I will do a small part. I will be swapping the first element with the last element and the remaining part recursion is going to handle. So this problem is recursive in nature. 
I, this problem qualifies the criteria of being recursive. Now, step number two. We have already discussed that as well. Uh, the small task that I will be doing. I have to figure out the small task that I will be doing. Okay. So basically, I will be swapping the first element with the last element, the leftmost element with the rightmost element. That's what I will be doing, right? Okay. What will recursion handle? Recursion will handle everything from L plus 1 till R minus 1. Okay. From L plus 1 till R minus 1, recursion is going to handle. And final step, the base condition. What will be the base condition? So uh, your left side will keep on incrementing, your right, right side will keep on decre decrementing and at a point they will collide. They will collide together and then we should stop. Okay. We should stop when they collide. So that will be the base condition. Now we can have a look at the code itself. But as I told that the step number two and three are interchangeable. That means I can ask recursion to do the task before doing my own small task. Or I can complete my small task and ask recursion to complete the remaining task. So uh, the step number two and three can interchange. I will show you that with the help of the code. So here is the problem statement. Problem, don't read the problem statement yet. Uh, the problem statement is slightly different, but we have to, let us assume that we have to reverse the entire array. So for that, I'm creating a function void reverse array helper. Now in this function, I will have to keep one left pointer and one right pointer. So int left, int right, okay? And I need a vector of int array. I will need this. Then I will do my own task, okay? Do the small task. This was the step number two, right? Step two. So what's the small task that I have to do? I have to swap the element which is present at L and the element which is present at R. So I can use the swap function. This is the function present in C++ library. So swap ARR of L comma ARR of R. I'm done with the swapping. Okay. So my task is done. My task is done. Now I will ask recursion to handle the remaining part. Okay. Ask recursion to handle the remaining part okay so we are going to use the same function here from l plus one r minus one and a r r and that's it yes that's it so this is the step number three and now the final step the base condition the base condition is step number one so the base condition would be if L and R collides. So if L is greater than or equal to R, in this case, simply return. Do nothing, simply return. So this is the base condition. Now, let us call this function from here. So if you read the problem statement carefully now, you will find out that you have to start reversing the array from the index M plus one. You can go and read the problem statement. By the way, you will find all the links in the description. You will be able to solve all the questions. Links will be there in the description. So we have to take, we have to consider M plus one as our L. And what's going to be the R here? R is going to be ARR dot size minus one. Basically the last index of the array, ARR dot size minus one. And then we have to pass the array. And this will reverse whatever is required in the problem statement. It will reverse the array starting from M plus one till the end. And we got the correct answer. Let me submit this. And it got accepted. Now, as I told that we can basically ask recursion to complete its own task first. We will give a big chunk of problem to recursion and ask recursion to complete it. So that's something that we can do before our own task. Our task is to basically swap the leftmost element, the rightmost element. So before that, I can ask recursion, please do your task first and then I will do my task. So I think this should also work. Yeah, this is going to work. Done. It's also working. Now your homework is to draw the recursion tree for the given problem statement. You can refer the lecture number five. If you haven't watched that, make sure that you do because there I have covered a similar kind of problem. Now, after drawing the recursion tree, tell me in the description what's the space complexity and what's the time complexity. Time complexity is total number of nodes in the recursion tree that you will draw and space complexity is the height of the recursion tree that you will draw. Okay, sometimes they both are same. Sometimes they are very different from one another. So basically I'm conducting all the polls and I'm providing all the updates on Instagram. So you can follow me there. Let's meet in the next lecture. Be prepared to start with the interview questions.